Now previously I have uh, discussed the theory of circumpolar bodies and also worked out an example. Uh, today I'm going to work out uh, some uh, more examples. So I'll take up two examples today, one in the northern hemisphere and one in the southern hemisphere and uh, hopefully the concept of circumpolar bodies will become clearer for your understanding. So let's get started. So today's uh, topic is circumpolar bodies and in this uh, video I will take up two examples. Let's start with example number one. Uh, the example or the question says um, that a star when on the meridian above the pole uh, bore north. The bearing of the star was north with a true altitude of 70 degrees 0, 04 minutes and when on the meridian below the pole uh, it again bore north with a true altitude of 22 degrees 0, 05 minutes. What you have to do is find the observer's latitude and the star's declination. Now before you start with this question make sure that you understand the meaning of each of these words and how you should be depicting it in the diagram. So let's start from the very beginning that there is a star and it is on the meridian. So when we say it is on the meridian that means it is on the observer's meridian. When it is above the pole it was bearing north. So it was bearing north from you as an observer. Now where are you as an observer? You are right here Z. Z is the observer's zenith. That is your position on the earth when projected onto the celestial sphere. So this is the rational horizon diagram and you as the observer is denoted by the letter Z that is your zenith, your position when projected onto the celestial sphere. So the star was bearing north in both the cases. So you can see the star was bearing north in both the cases when it was uh, above the pole as well as when it was below the pole. So you can see here in both the cases because the star is bearing north of you the both the stars position though so the, this is the stars position this is the stars position uh, this is when it is uh, above the pole all right and this is when it is below the pole you can see it from the values itself uh, so both the cases the star was bearing north of you the star was on your meridian that is you and the star are both on the same meridian so on the same line right and now you have to find the observer's latitude. This here is of course the equinoctial which is the celestial equator, equivalent of the celestial equator. Uh, so your upper meridian altitude as given in the question is that is nx that is uh, 70 degrees 0, 04 minutes. So this is the altitude. So I'll use a different pen otherwise you'll get confused. So nx nx is equal to 70 degrees and 0, 04 minutes and lower meridian altitude that is nx dash is 22 degrees 0, 05 minutes so both the values are given to you in the equation so nx dash is 22 degrees and 0, 05 minutes all right then xx dash x x dash so you have n x dash and you have n x so x x dash will be n x minus n x dash you can see it in the diagram that x x dash will be equal to n x dash minus n x that will give you the x x dash and that will be 70 degrees 4 minutes minus 22 degrees 0 5 minutes All right and that will give you the value of xx dash as 47 degrees 59 minutes. Now polar distance which is the distance from the pole to the star when above the pole and when below the pole. So in one case it's px in the other case it's px dash. px equals px dash will be equal to xx dash divided by 2. So this is xx dash divided by 2. So xx dash is 47 degrees 59 minutes. You can see all this in the diagram as well. It's very clear in the diagram. So px or px dash is exactly half of the xx dash. So xx dash divided by 2 will give you 23 degrees 59.5 minutes. 23 degrees 59.5 minutes is the polar distance. That is px and also px dash. 
so declination in this case and declination is nothing but the distance from the celestial equator to the latitude of the celestial body so we don't say latitude of the celestial body we say it as declination so declination which is the distance qx is nothing but equal to 90 degrees that is the distance from the pole to the q from p to q minus polar distance that is px so 90 degrees minus 23 degrees 59.5 which is px will give you the declination which is qx so 90 degrees minus 23 degrees 59.5 is 66 degrees 0, 0, 0 0.5 minutes and it is north because the star's declination is north because the star is north of the equator it is north of the equator and we don't say equator we say equinoctial because we are talking everything about in the celestial spheres perspective all right so therefore observer's latitude in this case which will be the distance np it will be equal to np is equal to nx dash as you can see plus x dash p or px dash all right so np is equal to which is the observer latitude nx dash nx dash we already know from above is 22 degrees 0 5 minutes that is the altitude of the body below the pole plus px dash which is equal to the polar distance of the body that we have calculated previously so if you add the two together you will get the latitude of the body as 46 degrees 04.5 minutes north again why is it not because you as the observer you are north of the celestial equator that's why the latitude is north now i have discussed a similar example here below in the perspective of the southern hemisphere so if i take the same kind of an example and i say that during the same night a star was bearing south with true altitude 28 degrees 34 minutes and again it was bearing south with a true altitude of 76 degrees 46 minutes calculate the star's declination and the latitude of the observer it's quite similar to the previous example but i wanted to show you one from the southern hemisphere's perspective as you can see here everything uh, is from the southern hemisphere's perspective i have just changed the values here so again this is the equinoctial or the celestial equator you as the observer are here you are south of the equator and so is the star the star is also bearing south that means the star is bearing south from you the star is south of you but both the star and you are south of the equinoctial so that means your declination uh, not your declination but your latitude as well as the star's declination this time will be south so here you can see based on the previous example sx dash is equal to 76 degrees 46 minutes sx sorry sx is 76 degrees 46 minutes so this distance here is 76 degrees 46 minutes the greater distance the smaller distance which is sx dash is 28 degrees 34 minutes right so therefore again similar to before xx dash will be equal to sx which is the greater distance minus the smaller distance sx dash so 76 degrees 46 minutes minus 28 degrees 34 minutes you get the xx dash as 48 degrees 12 minutes now i already know i have told you before that the polar distance is exactly equal to half of xx dash so polar distance is equal to px or px dash all right which is equal to half of the xx dash so xx dash was 48 degrees 12 minutes you half it you get 24 degrees 06 minutes it is the polar distance that is equal to px or equal to px dash and declination which is the distance of the star from the equinoctial which is qx is will be equal to 90 degrees minus polar distance why 90 degrees because from the pole to the celestial equator is 90 degrees you already know px you have to know qx it will be 90 minus px so 90 minus px will give you declination which is qx which is equal to 65 degrees 54 minutes and this is south like i have told you it's south because it is bearing south from the observer and also it is south of the equinoctial similarly in this case because your southern hemisphere observer's latitude is equal to sp not np np was when it was in the northern hemisphere sp equals if you look at the diagram above sx dash minus or oh, sorry plus px dash or x x dash p 
so you already know the value of sx dash from above what it was given in the question 28 degrees 34 minutes and you have calculated px dash as 24 degrees 06 minutes add the two together you will get the latitude of the observer again it is south because you as the observer are located south of the equinoctial now if there are some things which are not clear to you then i advise you to watch my uh, video previous videos on uh, circumpolar bodies the theory behind it at least so you have a better idea uh, i have given the link in the description section below please go and watch that video watch the worked example and then come and watch these examples as well uh, that will give you a better idea of how to go about working out the question what is the meaning of below the pole above the pole and also understanding the rational horizon diagram i'll see you soon with another video on a little bit harder examples of circumpolar bodies so let me know how you're going with it bye for now